Eh bien, nous allons euh, reprendre le cours de cette euh, Frogan Technologie conférence numéro 6. OK, let's resume for this uh, sixth conference. Thank you for bearing with us. Thank you for being so patient. So this session is about a tec uh, technical uh, aspect of the Frogan technology. And this is also a response to a clearly identified need. Jean-Emmanuel spoke about it when he made his introduction. The OP3FT team met and talked to students in universities and met with a large number of designers. And all these designers said, oh, that's very interesting. That's an interesting technology. But only writing sites with XML language is kind of a problem. So we knew about it already. And today we are going to release the software library, which is the FSDL software library. So FSDL, as you know, is the uh, Fogan site description technology. That's a piece of software that can be uh, downloaded, installed on the computer, on servers. That's for the rendering of the FSDL's elements. And it's used by the Fogan display. You can't see it because it's all packaged, but it's there. So we've separated it from the Fogan player. So it has its own identity and it's made available for free, free of charge, so that other software publishers can use it and can include this uh, software library in their own information systems and more specifically the authoring tools. You know what authoring tools are. These are very simple to use interfaces and graphics to turn graphic element into a code, i.e. an FSDL code, code. So Alexis is going to make an introduction to this uh, software library and we'll see a very practical aspect of this. How can we use it in the context of authoring tools? I'm a software publisher, I want to create a tool that can be installed on a computer, what shall I, should I do? And if I'm a software publisher and I want to create a hosted interface to create authoring tools on the web, I can use the same software library, but in a slightly different way. So over to you, Alexi, to tell us in what kind of environment this can be achieved. Okay, thank you. So we'll have a look. We'll look at how we can use this piece of Frogan's plan, which is in Frogan's plan, uh, to to get a rendering of Frogan's site in the memory. So the access path is Frogan's.org, the official website or site for the uh, Frogan's technology. And on the home page, you have a section about FSDL. So on this section about FSDL, which I'm opening right now, you always have the FSDL specification as a preliminary version, which is still being discussed. So we're talking about rendering constraints so that uh, users uh, can easily use Frogan's player on their screen. And here we've, you've got the two last or latest drafts which you can find on the site. So a technical specification, uh -oh, there is a problem here, but it looks like this kind of document. It's a text document that looks like a RFTs from ISTF. And for those of you developing, developing at the moment, you have a recap 
that gives you a list of the FSDL elements which are available to developers. For instance, I want to put a filter on an image. Well, here are all the filters, uh, graphic filters, I can use in order to uh, change uh, uh, a picture for a rollover, or for a button or whatever. So, now the objective is to allow developers to create other tools so that others, like graphic artists, can um, design Frogan sites faster than, you know, typing in by hand. So that's the uh, library of the FSDL, and that's our mission. We want to provide you, free of charge, this uh, software library that implements uh, SFDL and all the other uh, implementations. So that's the list. I click and I end up on a page on which I can download the library. It's a bit like the get.frogan site. And by the way, it's the same number because they're in sync. And they're available at the moment. When you have the library, which is release uh, 5.1, it corresponds to Frogan's plan 5.1. They're in sync. The objective, well, the, the library has a very specific objective. For those of you using it, it's going to save you years of work in terms of rendering your Frogan's drawing on a screen because that's a hell of a lot of work with many layers and in order to draw at the nearest pixel all the different transformations that's kind of very difficult. It took us a lot of time to prepare this library, make it fast, multi-platform, uh, drawing in exactly the same way, whatever the device. So that takes a lot of time and we we spent this time and we believe it's no use having developers spending that much time. So this library is going to parse and validate FSDL documents but mostly to draw them, to design them as slogan slides. And at the same time the software library is going to allow access to the different resources in the slide and to the different layers in the slide. So it will allow us injecting the FSDS site with the associated images and to capture images which are stored on the Frogan site. So that's for developers, not for site developers, but for software developers. So okay, your question would be what kind of software? Well there are three major categories of software. You have the desktop applications used in a PC environment with Windows and it's a bit like a uh, graphic design piece of software. And you have a second category of applications. These are web applications executed through a browser, so they're hosted on a server, but you access them via a browser. And then you have free apps for which you locally use these apps. So. What we say that a large number of applications will emerge thanks to this uh, uh, library. So we're talking about um, hosted de desktop and mobile type of applications. And for developers who do not have time to develop directly using FSDL, well, they can use these tools. So this library works under Windows, Mac, and Linux, they so these are the, the FSDL library was written in C, like the internal core of Frogan's plan is written in C language for obvious performance re reasons. But all software developers are not developing their applications in C language. I mean, we know that we need to use PHP to get a beautiful Frogans, and, and there are other technologies like Java, C-chart, 
and other languages to design various types of applications. So as the library is written in C language, we had to provide wrappers or adaptation li library for this to adapt to other languages. And this is what we did with another application called UPIL, which adapt our C language library into to Java or PHP language. So these are quite uh, time-consuming operations and at OBIT3FT we've fully automated the, genera uh, the generation of these wrappers to allow the library to be used. And here you can see that the library is available in Java 1.6.7.8 and it's also available through a wrapper and it's available in PHP uh, and you have the different releases here. So we still have a lot of work in the pipeline. We still need to uh, work on the 64 bits version of Window, uh, likewise for Mac OX6 and we're working on a wrapper which is almost finished but that's, that would be for C-sharp so that C-sharp developers can, can work on applications in their .NET environment. So this is a library but in line with our mission we are making it available in a very large number of environments and for a very large number of potential devices. Now, how is it presented? Well, it's an archive which can be downloaded in three formats. The archive is described and you see in the description you see all the available versions. They're all placed there so that it's easy to operate whatever the environment you work in because sometimes you can work on two or three different devices at the same time. So here you see a tree in this archive and here let me take just this example we have a directory called reference implementation and this is where I see the C language implementation in the FSDL library and for those of you who are familiar with that you see the header the header which is as FSDL but you also see the binaries which are needed for Linux, Windows and Mac OX. This is another specific file which you don't want to forget about if you're working on applications. These, this is something available in the archives of Frogan's player, but they, these are all the letter fonts which are supported and which are available in order to guarantee a good rendering whatever the language you use. And it is this very file that corresponds to the most significant part of the Frogan's player and which can adapt to any language in the world. And we have demos, our circulate types written in Korean, Arabic, Chinese, etc., etc. So for the software library, on the, I mean, a developer might be willing to use slides in, the, in those languages, so we need this. Okay, so if I need this archive, I'm going to download it. Now, how do I use it? Well, if you've used it, it means you've downloaded it and then you need to operate it. So if I work in C language, I'll, I would, I'll just be using these scripts. So if you're in C language, all you do is the fsdl.h in your development environment. And then those two files, plus two, that's four together. This one is the binary file. This one includes the fonts. This one is upiltask.h and with all this I can build my application.
And all the instructions are clearly defined in the fsdl.h file. So in different languages, you have exactly the same thing, just a matter of language. And of course, there are developers not using the T language, they're using a JavaScript and they have to observe a certain number of instructions. Let's say that they're working in, a, in an Xlips type of environment, which is what I'm going to do in a minute because I want to show you an example. And the developer is going to capture a certain number of these files. And here I have fsdl.java instead of .h. So I've retrieved this file to understand what kind of functions are available to me. And whatever the language, you get exactly the same instructions. So I won't be penalized working in Java as compared to C Sharp, C or whatever. All graphics are available with the same level of performance, whatever the language. So I'm going to use the set of tools. So now my suggestion is to log on a machine. Yes, that's the correct piece of machine. Now I'm searching for Eclipse, which is a Java development tool. So that's a big dive in mystery seas for some of you. Michel, I need your help here. Because you're a specialist with a clicker or mouse for that matter. Do you reckon it's going to be enough if I just do that? Seems okay. So, let me take this opportunity and introduce Michel. Michel is our guru, especially when we talk about development languages and he is in charge of making sure that all tools are available in all different languages. Michel says, log on to Windows, use Windows, it's going to be easier. So as we said, this the setup was a bit last minute, so we'll move to Windows. So this piece of machine contains various virtual machines, so Eclipse here is already open. This gives me an opportunity to say a few words about the Java language because I was about to develop in Linux but now moved to Windows offering the same type of development because that's one of the features of Java language is that it allows writing desktop applications which can be used on various devices from Mac to Linux, not forgetting Windows. So, here I am with this library which is used within the framework of a project and this project will be made available. It is not in the package which you can download now. It needed a bit of formatting and in the next package you'll get the inclusion of this example I'm showing to you now so that uh, you or other developers you know so that you can use it and start doing very interesting things with it. So as compared to the elements I mentioned before, uh, if you have information that was in the archive file before. So we recognize the fonts and the library itself. And then there is fsdl4.so and this is what makes the link between the Java world and the C world. And this is what we achieve with our tools at OB3FT. And here I just have a project. We worked on a small project. So I'm going to execute this project and I'm going to see quite funny things appearing on the screen. Oh my gosh, what did we see? What I just saw, 
and we took the example of Hello World. So again, this Hello World demonstration Krogan site, and we felt, okay, we'll go for an extremely simple instrument because it helps better understanding things. And this pilot model is going to capture this, store it, store it, so that it can be used uh, in a dynamic mode in the future. So we took the two slides from the Frogan site, and you probably recognize, you probably recognize the two representations of the slide. So usually this is not the way they're shown. It's when the uh, site is made smaller. You start from there and then you go to the smaller representation. But what you need to understand is that the, the sign is drawn at this magnitude with this very level of accuracy. So we're looking from a designer's protection. If we were an artist, we'd be talking about refining it to better adapt it. And here on the home page, you have a certain number of buttons on which you can press in order to simulate an author's uh, right. So, hello world, I can change it. I'm going to put Sabina. And immediately, this is drawn and displayed. So, that's not Frogan's player. Frogan's player has not even been turned on. I'm having a tool using FSDL, showing FSDL to me. And in a more sophisticated world, it would be the designer working from a computer saying, I want to change this element, I want to do this and that. And at the end of the day, they want to save the result in order to uh, put them online. So we see that I can also do that when we talk about the vignette representation. So we have two entry, entry points here just to show that we can work on the image of the Fogan site, but you see that when I navigate it doesn't change because these are graphic representations of the Fogan site. Here, for instance, we've varied intensity to the so layer, the first layer. If you see the, the Fogan's code, all we do is that we change the opacity of the site. Here it's not opaque at all, whereas when we put it online, the, this level goes up to 75%. So that's why it's probably more easy to work on the buttons of a coat, because there you get immediate results. Whereas when you start working uh, and use software afterwards, it takes a lot of time. Now, we all know that some designers won't accept the uh, loss of craftsmanship and they're still drawing by hand. Another example is that of layer 4. Layer 4 was planet Earth. And we can imagine that a tool can modify the intensity of the large layers they will go through. And then we have the angle. And you see, I can uh, rotate the Earth. This is a demo that we were doing by hand. And now it's much faster, obviously. And what you need to realize is that uh, we had some parameters issued. And only on this very basic site, we have uh, five to six percent of graphic with just five elements in the slide. So we have far more graphic freedom. And now that we've done this work at OP3FT, it, the ball is in the court of designers, of developers, who now need to uh, take the, bet the, the, bet the baton. But uh, let me finish with my second slide, and then I'm dod done, I promise. So we've opened other windows to the document. For instance, here I have the color 
of the red background, which is here. So if I write FF red, blue, yellow, I didn't sh just change that into red. If I do, well, I don't know much about colors, to be honest, and I just know a couple of things, but I managed to turn it green. I could turn it blue if you want, but you know what? There are 16 million possibilities, so I'm going to leave it like that. Uh, I don't know if you've seen here, but uh, there is. I'm trying to zoom in, but there is this shadow. Look at, to, to, to the right. You see that there is a shadow here which is present. Well, you see, for instance, you can make it, you can blur it or not. This is one example of a setting amongst the uh, different thousands of settings we can operate. There can be uh, different sh shadows on a drawing and the opacity of the shadow can be mitigated. So, and this is going to be the end of the very basic settings. But here we have two layers which can be repositioned. And I think layer 4 corresponds to the earth. So it is at uh, 120 on the rendering canvas. And if I shift it to the right, I see that it's getting very close, dangerously close to slide 2. And you see that we can change the position. So this is done manually. But of course, for someone working on a slightly more sophisticated uh, slide, it's going to be done in drag and drop mode. So, and it goes on and on and on. I mean, it offers a wide range of possibilities. So we all agree, Alexis, that an example of what's made available to publishers and it's the values that can be changed very easily. And this was just a demo, just to show if you are a Java, a Java developer and you have an interest, then you can log on the website and capture this project and get inspiration from that in order to develop more comprehensive authoring tools with drag and drop, etc., etc. So that's an effort that can be done quite simply, especially if you want to find inspiration from the Java code that will be available very soon on frogans.org. Yes! On this Mac, I have the same demo so it's the same Arthur's software which rotates exactly as on a Mac computer, likewise for Linux, if Eclipse is ever willing to get started. Okay, so not to create any frustration with our developers, fr developing friends, we need to show a couple of things very quickly. Donc nous avons, euh, so, we do have a class called fsdl.java that's going to be 1.3 minutes and this describes all the functions that are available. So if, for instance, I'm looking for a function called render Ah non, il faut que j'aille la chercher en... Oops, sorry. My mistake. I need to... Voilà, la rendering section. Donc voilà. Find it. OK, rendering sec section. So in this section, I can decide whether I want to draw all the two rendering canvases, so the uh, small size and the lead size uh, version, but I can also have all the layers and combined resources. So here, I have just the Earth, and if at one stage I'm editing one of the elements offered in the language, I can 
Start from the complete rendering and then focus on a local rendering of one of the elements. And this possibility is provided for by the uh, by the system. So it's a render perform. There is just one reference to someone. It's, it takes place after passing and it gets the rendering mode and then we can have access to the various elements that were drawn in your memory. So you see the interest for Java developers not to reinvent the wheel, the wheel because this render perform function calls for another function with a keyword called native. And this is what happens when they call upon this rendering a requirement, our environment will uh, allow us to find the version C of the of, of the, the development. The interface has been very much described so that we understand, of course, we have a mailing list and sometimes there are requests for our translation to be better translated. But at least our demo, as such, is it does exist. It's very simple. This is the FDSR sample communication tool, so that's a demo. And for those of you who are quite familiar with that, all we did was to use the test Frogan site and to put a certain number of jokers to replace dynamic events as they are being adapted. So this is an app application which is a kind of a head start so that developers can start working on very fast windows, test and then produce their own tools. So it is exactly the same in C. It is documented just the same way, and uh, the same thing is true for all other languages uh, through the interf interface file. Okay, so if I'm a developer, uh, software publisher, I can download this uh, from frogans.org. And it, what if I have any questions? Um, uh, it, it's all very documented and fairly easy to understand, but there may be some conceptual questions or implementation questions. What do I do? Well, um, if you have any questions, if you go to the download page on frogans.org in the FSDL section, you will have different links to the mailing list. And uh, you can use these to post a mes message on the early questions list, for example. Um, so you will get answers to your questions there. You can also tweet your question if you have a Twitter account. Um, after all, why not? Um, it'll be interesting, interesting to see some Java or C-sharp on Twitter. However, if your questions are long, if uh, something's not working or if you can't get it to work, you need more than 140, you need more than 140 um, um, characters. So in that case, you may want to go to the mailing list and put your questions. And uh, that way, you will also get more comprehensive answers, not limited to, to, the, to 140 characters. So once again, the addresses of the mailing list, you talked about the announcement uh, list earlier. So this is the early questions list, which is HTTPS uh, column slash slash list dot frogans dot org. Then you click on early questions and the uh, What's great about the the mailing list is when you ask a question, it goes to all the members, and uh, of course you're more likely to get a quick answer and a good answer. Alexi, could we move on to a PHP demo in a few minutes? Absolutely, I can do that. So let's um, start up another virtual machine where we have, let's see. The demo. I'm actually going in the same one, but I think it has more memory this time around, so I was told it would go faster. Right, so I'm in this context, I'm no longer a, a Java developer, but a PHP developer, and I'm trying to develop uh, an authoring tool that would work in a, bra in a web browser. How can I use the uh, library with the, um, um, the FSDL uh, reference material uh, to create FSDL code without XML, without typing XML? That's exactly it. So 
vers le PHP sont fournis. The wrappers uh, are provided in the downloadable archive and will uh, do the PHP adaptation. Um, uh, adaptation to the uh, C uh, language library. So here's a server. Uh, this is a local server. It's called fsdl for phpdemoftc 6 uh, .toc. This is a domain name in the environment of this particular server. Uh, the same thing it, it would have worked just the same on the previous PHP server. So depending on the if, if the modules are installed on the server, you have to follow the instructions to do this. The instructions that come with the uh, the uh, FSDL library uh, download. Once you've done that, within minutes you can install the uh, FSDL library in the PHP environment. You have to restart the server. Uh, it's not a full full restart, and um, but with a, within minutes, once again, you can uh, provide the PHP environment all the FSDL functions you want. So, we're now in a public uh, space on my server. I have this launch page, uh, uh, .php. I have different PHP files. There are adaptations of uh, the demo I did earlier on Java. So, in this demo, we're going to on a fait la même démonstration. Hein. Le principe, c'était. Euh... The demo is the same. Okay, we're, we're not looking at making an authoring tool, but um, it's really to get you started. So it's very similar, as you can see. The technique is the same. You just uh, uh, get the uh, Hello World test files. You put them in the memory. You include your substitution variables, and you just run this in, in a program that's going to change values. So, but I can, this is what it looks like. When you call for the page, here it is, what you get is this. You get the different instructions from the library that are uh, presented here. For example, a handle for a slide. Réaliser le parsing. Vérifier, voir combien il y a éventuellement de fichiers auxiliaires. Vous savez. Here is the parsing. We have auxiliary files. You could have a very high number, potentially, of auxiliary files. We're going to pick up the ID, uh, the identifier. You get then get the file uh, in the content, and then eventually you get the rendering. So what you see here right here is that with this page, which you can refresh as much as you want, or reload, rather, you have this PHP script. There it is. It is. It executes every single time I refresh the page or I call the page. And here you have the, uh, the, the web server and what you would see. This, these are the same visuals as before, but they're not in a desktop application. They're in a web application which means that an authoring tool could be an online tool. You could very well n install nothing on your machine and connect to a site, which then gives you, uh, uh, allows you to create fragrant sites. So we really have the two worlds. So for publishing professionals, you can either use desktop tools, online tools, or a combination of both, depending on your needs. And uh, that's exactly what we have here. And then we have this little surprise, thanks to Veronique. She uh, added this. So this is one of the layers. This is the, the planet layer. So with this, when you recharge or reload this uh, page, uh, we randomly generate the angle uh, from which you see the, the planet. So normally it will turn. There you go. See, every time you reload, you refresh, you have a different uh, angle which shows that it's working. There you go. See, it's, uh, it's a little slow. 
Et ici, quand je la recharge, c'est un angle de 167. So we have the different angles, one, 167 degrees. So a user with a web browser or a re, on, on a remote site could create sites like this. It is very easy to do. It's um, quite fun, actually. Uh, you don't have uh, uh, the burden of, uh, of, the li uh, of the library. Uh, we wanted this to be extremely uh, straightforward and, and seamless. See, right here, we've just created uh, this, which we're now working in. Here is my representation. We have the lead and the vignette. And if you scroll further down, um, parse, perform, and eventually you pick up the different elements. So this will be in the next release, of course. It will be added to the lib, uh, FSDL lib, uh, so people can play with it. But it will come along with the instructions to put the lib on the on the server, and at this point, I think that's what I can share with you. I'm still looking for the surprise. Um, here is the representation, and uh, and the layer. Here we go. Here is the layer. So in PHP, with render get layer with underscores. So we have the exact same prototype of the function. So you could go from a programming environment to another programming environment. And OP3FT, it's very uh, practical. If, if you're a C-sharp developer or Java developer and you're experiencing, you're, you're having trouble, um, quite easy. The interface being the same, it's very seamless. And I'll wrap up by saying that uh, the reason why these interfaces look alike and are so homogenous and therefore easy to to, 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 to use to, to, to generate uh, the content uh, is that uh, behind in the there is a technical spec which is called UPIL, which I mentioned earlier, which you can use to describe interfaces independently from the language. It's a spec which was created by OP3FT. And um, it, it, we use it to create uh, uh, libraries uh, that are independent from uh, the language. And we then have the infrastructure to generate interfaces in different languages without having to do them uh, manually. So these generators, of course, don't just start all by themselves. We had to create them. Today we did, and we can now add a function, for example. And within uh, minutes, or you could regenerate the full package, the full archive with the different languages uh, along with it. So this is quite important. This is, uh, uh, I think, um, a big leap forward in terms of technology. OK, thank you, Alexi. And uh, I think it would be great to further um, investigate the UPIL technology uh, in the future. For all types of users. So, again, thank you very much for this demo. If there are any questions, please don't hesitate. We have to accelerate a little bit. We have a, uh, you know, a very ambitious agenda for this afternoon. We'll be talking about Frogon's addresses, the public Frogon's address as well. There will be a presentation with one of our partners, Level Three. So. I uh, would like to now invite you to have a drink. We're uh, going to take a quick break, uh, but we're going to keep it very short. It will be just five minutes um, so we can continue the FTC6. Okay, thank you.